Welcome back troglodytes to the Troglies Guitar Show. Hey, we've got a sweet 80s explorer here today, but this guitar is kind of another eBay mystery guitar. I do not have the full answers for this guitar. I'm going to go over what I think is a little suspicious, as well as what is correct about this thing. But first, let's do a little bit of history of the Gibson Explorer. Now, the Explorers first existed in the late 50s. There were not very many of them made. They originally had Carina bodies, and those things are just beautiful. I would love to get to play one of those one day. In my opinion, I think the original Vs and Explorers are cooler than the Bursts of the late 50s. There's just so much mystique behind them. However, I would probably never purchase one, A, because I don't have that kind of money for guitars yet, and I would never be able to tell a real one from a fake because there are so many perfect luthier replicas that you cannot distinguish from the original without somebody that has tons of experience with the originals. Now, I don't know a lot about the Explorer's history, but I think they made them until around 60, 61, and then they just kind of disappeared until they came back in 1976. 1976 is when there was a limited edition Explorer out. From what I've read, that's like the first time they reissued these. And then once they sold pretty okay, they ended up doing, you know, regular runs of these guitars. Now in 76, your serial number will be a decal. So right on top of the serial number, it'll say limited edition, zero, zero, and then some other numbers. Those 76 limited edition Explorers are worth a pretty good chunk of cash. However, the ones that don't have limited edition, they don't sell for as much, even though spec-wise they're pretty much about the same. Now you'll find a lot of natural ones, you'll find a few white ones and a few black ones, but natural was definitely the most beautiful color, and the majority of those were mahogany. Apparently there's a few Karina ones out there, but I've never personally seen photos. And the next time Explorers were big, were kind of in the early 80s. This is when this shape was finally starting to be accepted and used and people wanted to get this instrument in their hands. So they did a Heritage series. Now they also did Vs in Karina, they did Explorers in Karina. They also rebirthed the guitar called a Modern. It's kind of a freaky fish thing. <laughs> I'll show you a photo of it here. Besides the high-end Carina reissues, which are highly desirable, there were two additional tiers to the Gibson Explorer. There was the base model. Those ones had a gold silkscreen Gibson logo, as well as a Nashville-styled bridge. And then there's the next step up reissue model. That's what I believe this one is. This one's been modified, but they have the ABR1 bridge. That means the bridge is drilled directly into the wood, and they have the Mother of Pearl Gibson logo. This is my favorite version. So this guitar, I believe, originally started life as one of those reissue explorers, but something has happened to this guitar, and there's a few anomalies we need to go over. The first one is this serial number. It is stamped upside down, and there is no Made in USA stamp. Now, I can explain the no Made in USA stamp strictly because this was made in Kalamazoo, as you can tell by the last three digits. For whatever reason, the Kalamazoo guys must hated that Made in USA stamp because I see so many Kalamazoo made guitars leave the factory without that stamp. That stamp is not historically correct until around 1969. I'm guessing they would leave that off on some really nice examples because they want it to look more 50s correct. Now, I can tell you, this font looks right to me. The only thing I cannot explain is why it's upside down. Usually, these numbers are stamped the other way. I've been unable to source another example that has it like this. However, this could just be a limited edition model that I've never heard of. Now, I listed this guitar on Reverb, and a man named Kelvin contacted me and shared some photos of his Explorer. As you can see here, his serial number is pretty much the exact same font. His is also missing the Made in USA stamp, but his serial number goes the other way that you would traditionally see it. Now his is a mint condition Explorer and it is absolutely beautiful and I'm very appreciative of him being able to send me these photos. 
So with this serial number being stamped upside down, that kind of raises some suspicion if this is even a Gibson guitar. Now sometimes you can just feel the difference. Like you can feel if it's a Gibson. You can also take a look at the logo. Is it period correct? However, you've got to be careful. There are a lot of new old stock headstock veneers that are for sale all the time on eBay where they just throw these on Epiphone guitars, reshape the headstocks, make them look good. Now, thankfully, this black lights like the original finish. So I really do believe this is an original Gibson neck. If we take a look here at Kelvin's headstock photo again, you can see how Gibson makes these. There's three pieces to an Explorer headstock. There is one that runs along the tuners, kind of like a large wing. And then there's kind of a spliced section right here to get the top part. Now, if we get this in the light just right, you can see right here where you have that large splice for the top of the headstock. So that's right. And then if you follow along the tuners and then it slightly goes up, you can see the other piece. So that tells me the construction of this is also correct. There's also one that runs along these tuners. I'm thinking there's been a repair of some sort. You at least have a crack right here. But you also have the original Schaller styled Gibson tuners on here. And you don't have any evidence of any other tuners. So to be perfectly honest, I have no doubts about this neck being absolutely 100% Gibson authentic. Again, the only thing I can't explain is why the serial number is upside down. There's some crazy stuff that happens in the Norlin era, so it's not completely unheard of. You even have the truss rod being slightly off center, which is another kind of a Gibson thing. The truss rod inside is definitely the correct Gibson styled one. And Gibson did use stock brass nuts on some of these explorers. Now here's the part of the guitar I cannot fully explain or sell with 100% confidence. I am not 100% sure this is the original body this guitar left with. If it is, it has been heavily modified by being repainted quite a few times. I almost think this might be like a 70s Ibanez Explorer body that had a Gibson neck put onto it. That's worst case scenario. The whole body has been spray painted black. It's actually been spray painted black, then kind of a reddish color, then black, black, and black again. <laughs> but this paint covers the heel joint. Now that could just be somebody being a sloppy sander or they were trying to hide the heel repair or when they put the new neck onto the body. So I can't sell this guitar with complete confidence. You can see there's what looks like some cracks. However, I really just think those are deep scratches because there's scratches all over this guitar. It looks like somebody was trying to take the finish off or they were just trying to buff it down. I don't know. The body's a little bit chewed up. The other reason why I believe this might be like a lawsuit era type body is because of the pickups and pots in this thing. These are not Gibson pickups. These are not the Gibson styled pots. Now I don't deal a lot with Asian guitars, you know, from the seventies, they made a lot of replica of Gibson guitars, but I have had a few. And I think this is where these pickups came from is one of those types of guitars. You can see here in the photos, they kind of just look like a cheaply made tarback Gibson pickup without the tar. And these pots, again, I'm not sure of their origin, but I think I've seen some photos of these in some import guitars. So the pickups and the pots definitely have been changed. No question about that. Now, to be honest, do they sound terrible? No. Do they sound absolutely fantastic? No, they're just kind of, you know, decent pickups. I mean, you'll see that here in the playing demo, so you don't necessarily have to replace them, but you might want to because these are chrome covered pickups, whereas everything else is gold. Now, these knobs are definitely modern day replacements. They don't black light at all. They are not vintage in the slightest. However, now that we've got the bad about this guitar down, let's go over the good. You have an authentic 70s 80 Gibson TP6 tailpiece. These things can sell for around a hundred bucks on their own. You have an era correct 80s Gibson ABR1 bridge. I've actually sold these for as much as $250. Again, you have your original tuners on here. They're Schaller made Gibson branded. And the next nice thing is this does have an original 80s Gibson case. 
So add all those parts together, and a conservative estimate is about $600 worth of Gibson parts. Somebody who's dressing up a fake probably wouldn't put such nice parts on this guitar. So that's why I believe this thing could indeed be the real deal. Now this pickguard I had initially thought had been replaced. However, now that I looked at Kelvin's pickguard, this looks very similar, except for it has lots of scratches and it's a little bit black because of probably all the spray painting this guitar has had. So underneath here, somebody did a little bit of extra routing for this mini toggle switch. It looks suspiciously well done. And I swear I've seen an import explorer have this type of route. That's another thing that kind of has going against this being an original Gibson body. But again, I'm not sure. If you guys know more than I do on this subject, please feel free to comment because this is kind of a mystery explorer that we're learning about together. Now it's possible somebody could have just took a router and then they just sanded it up nice and then the paint just makes it look good. However, this coil split switch is not actually hooked up to anything. You could easily just take this off if you wanted to. However, I thought I would leave it in in case whoever wants to buy this guitar wants to put some type of pickup in here that can be coil split. You also have an added brass poker chip and a brass switch tip, and those are pretty nice parts. Now underneath the pick guard, I did try removing this finish. I had bought some acetone and you know, I don't remove finish from guitars like ever. That's the last thing I always want to do. But Tommy, the one who does some of my playing demos said, you can use acetone to remove spray paint. So I tried a little bit of that. It did come off, but it's not coming off. There's just so many layers on this stuff. I just gave up. But you can see here where it looks like there's some mahogany peeking through. However, since the scrubbing acetone on it wasn't working, I had this fantastic idea. Let's just pour acetone on this guitar. I don't know. For some reason, I just thought it'd be like a strong acid and just burn it off instantly. But no, that's not what happened. It ended up splashing. So that run line right there you see, oh, that's my bad. That's me dumping acetone on this guitar. So I really don't have answers for the body of this guitar. This is the one thing I really can't explain and the previous owner of this guitar had it since the early 80s, and he couldn't give me any information on it either. So this guitar is a little bit of a mystery. I'm 100% confident this is at least a Gibson Explorer neck. I cannot say for 100% confidence this is a Gibson body. I think if you took the finish off this guitar, you would be able to find out, but obviously I don't know how to do that very well. But I can tell you this, whoever did the work did a great job. The action's nice and playable. It's actually pretty low. And you have plenty of downward adjustment room, so it's not like they messed up the neck angle if this was reset. So while this isn't the cleanest example of an 80s Explorer, I definitely do suggest checking one of these out if you ever see them. There's just something great about these old Explorers. So let's go ahead and hear how this one sounds.
this guitar weighs 9 pounds 1.8 ounces and features a thick 50s neck profile. Alright, let's go over the condition of this guitar. This guitar is definitely in fair condition. That's like the grading right above absolutely trashed. However, I think a little bit of TLC with this guitar would go a long way. So your headstock is completely covered in checking and scratching, but I actually like to see that because that tells me that this guitar is old. Now the original owner of this guitar lived in Alaska, so this thing has been in hot cold, hot cold, hot cold, it's definitely very natural to see all this finish checking. Now being from Alaska, I was scared this neck might be twisted, but thankfully it's nice and straight. We don't have anything to worry about on this one. The truss rod also adjusts just fine. You have a brass nut, and I believe that is stock. That came stock on many 80s explorers. But the fretboard on this is definitely rosewood. Absolutely beautiful now that I've cleaned it up. This originally had a lot of player's gunk on it but the frets are in good shape. Honestly, they show very minimal wear, hardly any at all, just a little bit of flattening spots. It really is an excellent playing guitar. There's all kinds of steel wool scratches all over it. So yes, you can play this thing as is, but let me tell you, this thing reeks of spray paint. I mean, you take it out of the case, that's what you smell. You smell that fresh spray paint stuff. Now, I don't believe this is a fresh coat, but it's just kind of how it is. You've got scratches everywhere. You have my acetone line, which I could not get to remove. I think what actually happened is I removed one layer of the finish. Honestly, I think this would be a great project explorer for somebody to either refinish it in a proper black or what I would like. I really love the natural explorers. So the front of the body, it's got lots of scratches, but I think if you were to take this finish off, you would be pretty happy with what you find underneath. The only other guess I have why this Explorer might have been spray painted over so many times is there could be a Kaler route under here. Now, usually with a Kaler route, if you get it in the light just right, you can still see the outline of it. I do not in this case, but that doesn't mean it's not under there. So your pickups sound decent. I'm not 100% sure what they are, but you do have a dent in the pickup cover right here. And your original Gibson parts here, they do have some tarnishing and wear to the gold hardware on the edges as well. But for the most part, they do look pretty darn good. Again, the back of the headstock, you have tons of finish checking because this is likely the original finish. And again, the serial number that's stamped upside down. I can't explain it, but it does look correct to me. Again, at the very end of this tuner screw, you have a crack into the wood. You can feel it. Now, is that an area that's under any tension at all? No, not really. Is it ever gonna cause you any issues? No, probably not. It's just kinda there. I mean, you might be able to seep some glue into it. I don't know, maybe it's already been repaired. I mean, it's just one of those things. It's good to know it's there so you can watch it, but I don't think you'll ever have any issues with it. You also have finish checking all over the neck, but no breaks, cracks, or repairs that I could see to the headstock itself. Now this neck, I would say it's a nice chunky 50s neck profile. You can see you have some light impressions on it, but for the most part, it's fairly clean. You do have some very small red dots on it though. There's a few of them here, like right here and there but I think that just might be some residue from the spray paint because there does appear to be a red layer somewhere on this guitar. Here's another area where the finish is a little worn down. Now the current neck set joint, it looks pretty good. You've got a little bit of chipping to the finish, but that's fairly natural to see. But the only thing that I really see that could be like a crack, you can kind of see these deeper scratches. I really just think that's from steel wool though because you see that all over this guitar. But back of the guitar, once again, fairly chewed up with these steel wool scratches. Um, and right here, some of that acetone somehow got onto the back of the guitar when I dumped it on there. And it kind of melted the finish here. I think it actually melted the back plate a little bit too. I guess acetone gets really sticky once it's been on something. So I had to literally pry this thing off to get it off again. But you can get it off but you do have this kind of ugly spot here now because I clearly don't know what I'm doing when it comes to removing finish from guitars. 
So can you play this thing as is? Yeah, this thing looks great on stage from afar, but you know, up close in person, you can see there's definitely some wear and tear. The sides, you have Schaller strap buttons. They are gold. And right here, you can see where a layer of the spray paint has kind of been worn off. That's right where your arm rests. So your arm might turn black if you play this guitar a lot. There's also some areas here where I think this is just the red paint coat. I don't think that's actually the mahogany. You've got some dents and dings on the side as well. So if you've been wanting like an 80s Explorer, but you can't afford, you know, the 2000 to 3000 plus price tag, this is a decent option if you can live with knowing that this could be a replaced body. It might not be. The best case scenario is this is a 1982 reissue Explorer that's had the body repainted multiple times, has changed electronics and a little bit of extra routing in it. So now let's do the fun one, the blacklight test. All right, so clearly this body's not going to blacklight at all. I'm not sure when it was spray painted. If I can believe the guy that sold this guitar to me, it was spray painted in the 80s. So clearly, since this guitar has been spray painted multiple times, the body does not glow anymore. Is the original finish under here? I don't know. I couldn't find it. But the original owner said it had lots of touch-ups over the years. Now, when I bought it, I didn't know many touch-ups meant the entire thing was spray painted. I thought, okay, it's a black guitar. You might have had to touch this area up or this area. Just a few areas here or there, but no, it turned out the whole body had been spray painted. So back of the guitar and front of the guitar, you're toast. However, I was happy to at least see this. This is why I believe the neck is still the original finish because it glows this green color I would expect it to, being an 80s model. However, once again, you can see the heel joint was also spray painted over. Now that could just be somebody didn't care to mask this off and there are no repairs around there, but it's also possible there could be. So as you can see here, you do have some of the original finish. It's just kind of covered over by spray paint in a few areas as well. But this headstock looks good to me. You don't have any areas where it's been clearly broken or refinished or touched up. Here you can kind of see that little crack a little bit better. But everything about the neck is right, including the face of it. So again, I have zero doubts about the authenticity of the neck, the truss rod cover, the tuners, the bridge and tailpiece. Now, obviously this bridge was not originally on this guitar from day one, but it is an aftermarket replacement. I mean, it is possible, but most likely it's been a replaced part. So this one kind of fails the black light test as far as the body finish, but the neck definitely passes. All right, this one does still retain its original Gibson case. This is an era correct case. And let me tell you, these cases are pricey to buy aftermarket. You're talking 250 to 300 bucks. Now this one's a little bit worn, but as far as vintage Explorer cases go, it's actually in pretty good shape. These things usually get super trashed. So you have a few areas where the Tolex has kind of been ripped and scuffed, but you have three functioning latches. Two of them are these locking type, and then you have a traditional type with a functioning handle. But the interior is in good shape. It's a nice vibrant red color. Not quite as red as it appears here. It's more of kind of a dark maroonish almost. But overall, the, this case is in great shape. You would have no problem selling this thing separately. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this mystery 1982 Gibson Explorer, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. T -R -O -G -L -Y -S. Thank you, Trial Lights, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.